Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another Super Engines tournament. This time is Mystery Engine Debut and Tuning. So chess.com platform organized this um, tournament as the tuning for the for the Mystery Engine. Now, Mystery Engine is the Komodo NNUE neural network. Uh, however, I would like to show you another game from that tournament uh, because we have uh, seven engines. We have Stockfish, Mystery, Lilenstein, Lila Chess Zero, we have Stu Please, Komodo and the Ethereal. Uh, and now I would like to show you the game between Stofflis. Uh, according to chess.com platform, and its ranking is 3463, and Stofflis gonna play as white. Uh, and we know already Stofflis, I show you a couple of games of this engine, and it's a pretty much original one. While other uh, developers actually copy the, the NNUE code uh, to their own engines, uh, Stofflis uh, still, you know, stays quite original. Uh, and sometimes uh, quite often find also the, the the moves which are not so popular amongst the amongst the top engines so uh, this is why i love uh, stuff is quite um, a lot uh, evaluation is is different the lines are different so sometimes it's a uh, pretty much uh, interesting and the opponent of stuff is lilenstein and lilenstein actually is the uh, is the lila chess zero but not pure lila chess zero it actually has um, the database uh, of the games, of human games, uh, but uh, crafted, you know, uh, chosen very carefully which one should be analyzed um, by Lilenstein. And this is why Lilenstein uh, is quite a strong engine. In this tournament, it's, um, it's number three by ranking, the ranking 30. 542 um, and in this game gonna play as black so without further ado let's see what happened on the board because already the opening gonna be very interesting we have e4 e5 uh, f4 e takes on f4 so king's gambit accepted we have knight f3 and not the main line with the with the g5 move but rather d6 fisher defense and uh, these three moves were prearranged so it's end of the move and in move number four uh, Stofflis is on its own uh, and we have of course d4 the main idea here uh, attacking them the f4 we have g5 uh, and now for the human um, the most popular move is h4 which makes a lot of sense because after g4 the knight can jump to g1 and the queen cannot enter the game because of course the pawn is protected by the by the rook so that's the main idea uh, however here we have knight c3 stuff let's go for knight c3 variation we have g4 uh, and now what do you think what white is doing usually in this opening we have 27 games in the database and there is only one move played here bishop f4 so yes white actually sacrificed the knight the whole piece for the activity so we have g takes on f3 queen takes on f3 uh, and now knight c6 attacking the pawn on d4 uh, and here the main idea i will just show you how crazy this opening can be i'm not gonna show you all the lines this is the the pure madness but bishop b5 is the strongest move in the in the in the game the most popular at least uh, among the human and now after queen h4 bishop g3 queen g4 a uh, queen f2 bishop d7 and pinning uh, then we have a castle so as you already see this attack is extremely uh, dangerous um, and then bishop g7 queen f7 king d8 and would white have to um, find here or no probably no if you play this opening you have to know bishop h4 and we still have three games in the database all ended in a draw this is pretty crazy but both of the sides have to know exactly because a little exception if you don't know what you are doing uh, you are just doomed here it's uh it's extremely uh, difficult i'm just telling you the only move in this position is actually knight g2 e7 all other moves are much worse um king c8 is already uh, better for white and all other moves are losing it's losing terribly so knight g2 e7 is the actually only move to uh to try to fight for for black 
pretty much crazy stuff. But we have bishop c4, so this bishop actually gonna stay on the diagonal and point on f7. It looks like much more um, dangerous, uh, but now of course it allows knight d4. We have queen f2 and we have one game in the database. The main idea here is actually knight e6 and after uh, castle on the king side, the game continue. But as you see, uh, this already is a very strong attack um, against f7. However, this uh, this knight is a very strong knight um, blocking the, the pawn on e4 and also at the same time blocking the, the bishop from this diagonal. So um, knight e6 is the, is the move played by the human. It was won by, by black. However, here we have uh, quite a novelty, at least in the top level. Uh, we haven't seen in the tournaments, in the human tournaments, and we have bishop g7. And now rook d1 was played but st by Stofflis and you would ask, hey, why don't castle? It's better to castle and still have this, this rook on the d file, uh, but it's not that attractive. Actually, is a, is, a, is a pretty big mistake because after the castle um, and knight e6, the problem is after exchanging the, the, the bishop, this bishop can come to h6 and as you see, uh, this is very nasty pin, the, the queen gonna be lost and of course the game. So this is why rook d1 and the king belongs to the king side in the uh, in the king's gambit, usually, mostly. We have knight e6, we have castle as planned, uh, and now bishop c3. Um, and here, what would you play as white in this position? Uh, we have the move which is the strongest, of course, in the position, played by Stofflis, and it's bishop e5. Now the idea, of course, is um, to not double the pawns, the bishop bishop cannot be taken because we have the checkmate on f7. This position is just crazy. Uh, knight h6 defending the f7 first and only now bishop c3 still pointing and the rook. So rook g8 and now attack in the center. Boom! e5. Uh, Stofflis attacks in the center. And now a very interesting, of course the pawn cannot be taken because um, this, this is pinned pawn and, um, and the queen would be lost. Bishop d7 leads to very interesting variations because after e takes on um, d6, c takes on d6, bishop d2 with the idea of eliminating the defender and delivering the checkmate. So pretty much a very serious threat. But look at this. Bishop c6, so there is not even a time to deliver that checkmate because black are already pointing on g2 and uh, threatening the windmill. This, this is just, you know, crazy. We have g3 um, in that variation, in that line. It wasn't played in the, in the game. Uh, and then black has the time to play knight g5. Um, and yeah, and... Uh, it's the craziness not ends here. This this line is 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 already very uh, very interesting. Bishop g5, rook g5, and and now of course bishop f7, and here king d7, and that's not the end of the craziness. Look at this, boom! Rook d6 now is the strongest move in the position. And after king d6, rook d1 skewering the king. And now uh, look at this. If black plays something like bishop d5 or rook d5, it's actually losing for black. The only winning move, uh, the drawing move would be king c7. The only winning move is king e7. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I'm not going to show you the rest of the line because th this, this line is um, very complicated and a couple of more, more ideas here. And we are so deep into that so um, better just to go what happened in the game we have d5 which doesn't look that attractive actually black gonna lose that and um, that pawn and open the center however is the best move in the position so we have bishop d5 and and now uh, of course there are some um, nasty discoveries here so queen e7 first uh, as the queen is, is on the same file with the with the rook so queen e7 and now king h1 uh, also moving the king to the, uh, to the safety just to avoid any potential um, pins on the 
uh, on the g file. So uh, we have c6 kicking the bishop and the bishop could stay potentially on this diagonal. However, then the knight is a really great defender here, so uh, it would not uh, do much here. So this is why we have bishop f3 remaneuvering the bishop maybe, maybe the, um, this way. And we would have a triple attack against an f7 again. We have bishop d7 now play by the by Lila Stein uh, and now Bishop h5 isn't that great that would be too early Bishop h5 because black actually can simply castle and the point is uh, yes there is Queen a7 but the Knight also can come to the c7 uh, and white doesn't have anything here uh, everything is too slow the Bishop can come uh, simply to to e6 uh, exchange maybe some rooks and so on uh, so this way doesn't work this is why we have rook d Six with the idea of double the rooks on the d file now, uh, creating couple of more ideas here. So we have knight g4, and now again another crazy line, uh, which could happen but didn't happen is after bishop g4, rook g4, uh, actually after rook f to d1, um, finishing to double the rooks. If black castle uh, on the queen side, we would have something crazy. Queen a7, and look at this, knight c7 and now uh, bishop a5 and this is pretty fast attack the knight cannot move because we would have a checkmate on a8 this is crazy enough uh, also the bishop cannot move because the queen is coming to to b6 if the if the bishop is moved then of course we have this battery attacking the rook so as you see the position is completely insane and the only move for black here believe me or not is actually rook g2 this is the move uh, which would be extremely difficult to find for human maybe impossible for the engine is uh, of course much easier and now again the white cannot take the rook cannot take the rook because this rook come with the tempo then the queen gonna come also uh, the bishop is still on the board and controlling gonna join the game on the light squares uh, so what white would have to play here is rook d7 uh, and then black have to play another um, uh, very strong move rook h2 pretty much crazy stuff king h2 queen h4 king g2 rook g8 now so avoiding all of that stuff and look at this this is going to be the checkmate in one but according to the engine black stands better black stands better because the point is that black gonna deliver the perpetual check and if white is not precise even a checkmate and once if white tries to actually escape and cross um, disconnect the rooks then this rook can be actually picked up and uh, black gonna have much better position so uh, th this is just insane however we have queen e1 so um, the queen moves actually from this diagonal so that's gonna make the, the black you know castle on the queen side much easier maybe better uh, or maybe not would be queen g1 still keep an eye over here but as i said uh getting this this knight would be very interesting and um so bad that it was not played in the in the game we have queen e1 rook g6 now uh, and now queen d2 um, and now only now we have the castle are as the there is no attack on the queen a7 we have h3 kicking them the knight and now queen h4 saying you're not gonna you know get my knight because your pawn is simply pinned um, and now white uh, could go for knight uh, king g1 this probably is the best and the knight would have to retreat so knight h6 uh, and then after queen e3 attacking this um this pawn a uh, black could could go for something like b6 and look at this bishop e1 kicking the queen and after queen g5 this queen actually can come to a3 and find another attacking chances um, on the a7 also uh, focusing on the on the c6 it's a very hot um, position and black have to be very precise in the defense so um, that was interesting however we have a3 so we know already that the queen not gonna enter a3 anymore we have f5 e takes on f6 knight takes uh, sorry knight takes on f6 uh, and now rook e1 focusing on the on the knight 
So the knight goes to d5, defending. Now the knight is defended twice. Um, and now we have bishop e5. So bringing the bishop to this diagonal as the dark square um, are pretty much uh, very weak. So better to have them the bishop here. Uh, and now we have rook f8. Uh, we have also rook e4, lifting the rook with the attack on the queen. And now queen h6, asking to exchange the queens. And Stofflis doesn't want that. So we have queen f2 uh, with the attack on the, on the a7, so b6. Uh, and now rook a4, probably queen f1 with some ideas of entering the, the queen side, the position of the king uh, would be better here. Knight c5, um, defending that, also attacking the rook. So probably rook g6 first as the rook is attacked twice. As you see, a lot of motives and seeing them all for human would be maybe overwhelming. Rook g6, queen g6, and the rook would have to retreat, let's say e2, uh, king b7, and everything should be fine with the black position. One extra piece should be enough to, um, to win that game. So as you see, pretty much crazy stuff here. We have rook a4 now attacking the pawn uh, and... Lienstein say I don't care about that um, and we have the move knight g5 however in this position Lienstein missed queen c1 extremely strong move and now it's not that easy because after king h2 the only move actually we have knight e3 and cooperation between this knight and the queen is a uh, is a very strong even rook e7 black can actually sacrifice the rook this is the only winning move here uh, but of course the engine always always will find the winning the strongest move um, rook f3 um, and after queen f3 knight f1 and this uh, this is huge troubles now of course king g1 knight d2 winning the queen and the game king h2 uh, knight f3 g takes on f3 uh, and now queen g1 that would be the, the checkmate so uh, that was possible. Queen c1 is the, is the strongest move in the position, but it was missed. Maybe time troubles are uh, maybe not deep enough uh, analyzing by uh, Lilenstein, but we have knight g5. It's still a winning move. However, uh, black have to be, uh, of course, more precise here. We have rook g6 as the rook is attacked twice. So rook g6, h takes on g6, opening the h file this time. But now the rook, can go to h4 kicking the queen uh, but Lilenstein doesn't care about the queen look at this boom knight h3 attacking the queen and the point is that the knight cannot even be taken with the rook because of the, of the bishop and with the pawn as well uh, because a rook can take on f3 still attacking the, the other queen. So rook h6, rook f2 um, and after rook g6 white has the passed pawn uh, but black has one extra knight. So black of course is, is winning here. If rook h6 immediately the knight f2 uh, and the knight can uh, actually go back to g4. So there is no problem, of course, it's all winning. This is why we have queen d4 still keeping an eye on the, on the rook. Uh, the queen should move and indeed we have queen e3. But again, queen c1 uh, was much stronger because after king h2, again, knight e3 and... Uh, and yeah, whatever is white play, let's say rook h3, bishop h3, uh, king h3, and then queen h1. And look at this. Uh, there is always this fork here. And uh, yeah, very tactical, uh, highly tactical game. And, and all of this insanity on the board is uh, is just crazy. It can be played only by this uh, by these engines. We have queen e3, however, so um, Lilenstein want to exchange the queens. And now if the queens are exchanged, then after knight e3, the problem is uh, white not going to, to take back the material because if the rook takes, then of course the bishop takes. If the pawn takes, then the rook can come to f3. And as you see still, uh, the knight extra is, is enough to win the game. So it doesn't really work. This is why we have bishop d5. If the bishop, um, you know, disappears, appears 
from the from the f3 definitely it cannot be taken so now the knight is under attack but of course now we have knight f2 with check king g1 uh, and now queen e1 now exchanging the queens that would be a draw the material would be equal uh, however we have queen e1 a uh, king h2 and now g5 and now the point is that moving this rook doesn't really matter it's already lost um, because after let's say rook h8 pinning this rook trying to exchange there is always something like knight g4 with check king h3 um, and after rook h8 bishop h8 we're gonna have a checkmate here on h4 so uh as you see this is doesn't really matter what you do with this rook you're gonna get checkmated this is why we have g4 uh we have g takes on h4 and now um, again uh if bishop g2 is played then uh black gonna win the another another piece so it's of course winning completely winning rook and the minor piece up so this is why we have bishop c6 it doesn't matter much in this position uh so stofflis just you know play suicidal move uh we have bishop c6 we have queen b4 and this ended in the checkmate the game was insane this line was also insane and uh, i really enjoyed that analyzing that and i hope you too and if you like it press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you want to see another games from that engine tournaments and maybe you would like to see the mystery game the new super engine komodo nnue um then let me know in the comment press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one